Okay, so for our social application, we're going to use MongoDB. And I'm going to explain a little bit to you why we would use MongoDB in, a, in an application like this. So MongoDB has a very cool feature, which is called um, sharding. And what that allows you to do is, let's say you have, um, uh, you know, 600 records here of users, right? 600 records. Um, you're uh, with MongoDB, what you're allowed to do is it'll automatically, and you can add as much servers as you want to automatically split those 600 records in, you know, three different servers. So basically, um, when you store this, uh, this is your, like your application and uh, you talk to the MongoDB, um, driver, this is going to then split, you know, automatically split uh, 200 records here and 200 records here and 200 records here. And whenever you request one of these users, it'll know in which server it, um, it will find that, that, that user. So this user is going to be on the first one. This user is going to be on the second one, etc. And what's cool about all this is that let's say, um, you know, your, your, your database, uh, servers are filling up. Right. And, um, and what do you, what can you do there? Well, it's very easy in MongoDB to basically add another, another server here. And this will automatically then divide the 600. So this is going to go down, um, and split this into now would be 150 each and you don't have to do anything um, to do that. It automatically balances uh, those those servers out. So as you can see, you can you know infin infinitely scale horizontally as as you get more and more records. So that's a cool thing that that MongoDB has. Okay, so there are some concepts that you want to know about MongoDB uh, that we'll explain here. Um, one thing, the first thing is. Um, MongoDB has databases as the kind of like the main like collection, just like MySQL has, right? And then within those databases, we have collections and collections are basically would be more or less the tables in, in the MySQL world. So a database can have multiple, you know, collections there. Um, the other thing that you want to know about collections is that, so each collection, let's say we have a user collection and we have a, um, let's say block collection and a post collection. So basically you want to divide that as, um, you know, the vertical kind of like data, um, uh, silos that you're, you're going to be, um, you're going to be using. Um, each one of these uh, collections uh, can have one or many indexes. So an index would be um, basically you can index on the uh, user's username or the email. So let's say this is an index that has a has the user um, name and the email. What that will allow us to do is by is basically look up any user by their username in a very fast fashion. So imagine that we have all this is the user, like all the data. And you have many, many fields here like ID, uh, first name, last name, email, creation date, all those things. And you have more of those there. So but when you, you create an index, Basically, the index is a very tiny kind of like file that only has the 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 ID of the record and the username uh, for each one of those fields uh, records. I mean, um, and in, in, in MongoDB, we called each record a document. So these are documents. Each one of these is a, is a document. Um, and it's called document because um, another cool, cool thing that, that MongoDB has is that 
each document can have a different um, uh, basically schema or structure. So for example, the first record there could be, um, and it's all like uh, a pair. So ID is, let's say one comma, um, and the username is Jorge, let's say. But then the second document could have also, uh, you know, ID, but in this case would be two. And then let's say username would be uh, Richard, but it could have a, another field called, let's say, um, friends and 15. So see how this record, um, uh, the first record and the second record have different structures. MongoDB is fine with that. And um, what that allows us to do is we can modify the collection um, structures without having to do migrations, which is the this operation that we needed to do on our on our Flask introductory course, where if you want to add a new field or you want to change anything from the from those tables, you need to do a migration script. In this case, in MongoDB, you you don't need to do that. But having said that, you do want to have some sort of a structure thought out um, because then you know you're going to have different documents with different fields, right? Um, the last thing I want to touch on is that this ID is not really one and two, like in MySQL where you had a number that uh, would increment automatically, but base, but you know Mong uh, MongoDB uses something called the object ID, which is a uh, an automatically generated um, long kind of like string, and the thought process behind that is that you know a server. Um, as we saw before, a server can have uh, different sets of those users, so making them a number would, wouldn't make a lot of sense. So basically, MongoDB takes care of that and uh, um, generates a, a long random string, and uh, that's, that's the ID. So uh, why don't we start um, playing with MongoDB a little bit on our Cloud9 instance?